Hedy Lamar was a woman who lived a life as dazzling and multifaceted as her many talents. From her early beginnings as a Hollywood starlet to her later years as a reclusive inventor, Lamar captivated the world with her beauty, intelligence, and passion. But beneath the surface of her glamorous public persona lay a tumultuous personal life, marked by a string of failed marriages and tragic final days. Throughout her career, Lamar was held as one of the most beautiful actresses of her time, and her films continued to captivate audiences to this day. But behind the scenes, she struggled with a string of failed relationships and a deep sense of loneliness. Despite marrying six times, Lamar never found the happiness she so desperately craved, and her final years were marked by illness, financial struggles, and a growing sense of isolation. In this exploration of the tragic final days of Hedy Lamar, we delve into the complex web of relationships, struggles, and triumphs that defined her life. From her early beginnings as a struggling actress to her later years as a pioneering inventor, Lamar's story is one of resilience, creativity, and ultimately heartbreak. Through it all, she remained a symbol of strength and determination, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to inspire and captivate us today. Hedwig Kiesler was born in Vienna, Austria on November 9, 1913, into a well-off Jewish family. Her father was a director at the Bank of Vienna, and her mother was a concert pianist. Hedwig attended schools in Vienna and was sent to a finishing school in Switzerland as a teenager. By this time, she had already captured the attention of both prospective lovers and film producers with her unusual beauty. One of her acting teachers, Max Reinhardt, saw her potential and encouraged her to move into the world of films. Hedwig began her screen career in 1930 with two Austrian films, Money on the Street and Storm in a Water Glass. Although she had several other small roles in German language films, it wasn't until controversy arose that she made a name for herself in the cinema. In 1932, Hedwig starred in the Czechoslovakian film Ecstasy, which was released the following year. The movie told the story of a young woman whose husband was impotent, causing her to seek the companionship of a younger man. Two scenes in particular were responsible for the film's notoriety and quick banning by Austrian censors. One scene featured Hedwig running nude through a sunlit forest, while the other depicted a love scene in which she appeared to experience orgasm. Hedy Lamarr's controversial role in the film Ecstasy not only made her famous but also changed her life forever. Despite later claiming to have been pressured into doing the nude scenes, the cameraman on the film said that Lamar knew what was expected of her as the star of the picture. Nonetheless, the scandal surrounding the film led to condemnation from Pope Pius XI and temporarily halted Lamar's career. But the controversy also caught the attention of Fritz Mandel, a wealthy Austrian arms dealer who Lamar met and married in 1933. Mandel, who had converted to Catholicism to do business with Germany's fascist regime, was reportedly so disgusted with ecstasy that he tried to buy and destroy every copy of the film. However, Lamar's restless nature led her to leave Mandel and flee to Paris and then London with a single suitcase of jewelry, drugging her maid to facilitate her escape. She made her way to the United States in September 1937, leaving behind her troubled past and embarking on a new chapter in her life. Once Hedy Lamar arrived in New York, she wasted no time in pursuing her film career. She began negotiating with producer Louis B. Mayer of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, who had signed Greta Garbo a few years earlier and was looking for exotic European talent. Although she had initially refused Mayer's contract offer in London, Lamar had a change of heart and by the time the ship docked in New York, she had a $500 a week contract and a new stage name, Hedy Lamar. Mayer had devised the name, inspired by the silent film actress Barbara Lamar. Lamar's first film in the United States was Algiers in 1938, in which she starred opposite French actor Charles Boyer as a woman who, despite being engaged to another man, has an affair with an escaped thief. The film was a success and a strong launch for Lamar's American career. However, her subsequent films, Lady of the Tropics 1939 and I Take This Woman 1940, were both flops. The latter, co-starring Spencer Tracy, was even renamed I Retake This Woman 
after Mayer demanded numerous changes to the script. Nonetheless, Lamar persisted in pursuing her acting career, determined to make a name for herself in Hollywood. Hedy Lamar's Hollywood career turned around in 1940 with the release of two successful films. In Boomtown, she starred opposite Clark Gable as a woman caught between two oil men. Comrade X was an anti-communist romance in which Lamar played a Soviet streetcar driver who falls in love with an American reporter, Clark Gable. During World War II, Lamar continued to star in popular films, including Come Live With Me, 1941, Ziegfeld Girl, 1941, and White Cargo, 1943. In White Cargo, Lamar played a mixed-race prostitute working on an African rubber plantation, which caused controversy due to its steamy content. Her success continued with 1943's The Heavenly Body, where she emerged as one of the top screen love symbols. Hedy Lamar's popularity among men was evident in a poll of Columbia University males who ranked her as the actress they would most like to be marooned with on an island. During World War II, Lamar participated in the war effort by offering to kiss any man who would purchase $25,000 in war bonds. She raised $17 million with 680 kisses. In addition to her screen stardom, Lamar had plenty of space in celebrity gossip columns. She dated silent comedian Charlie Chaplin in 1941 and had flings with Burgess Meredith and several other actors. Lamar married producer Jean Markey in 1939, divorcing him the following year. She was then married to English actor John Loder for four years and had two children with him. Lamar was married three more times later in life to band leader Teddy Stauffer, Texas oil magnate Howard Lee, and lawyer Louis Bowles. However, all her marriages ended in divorce. Composer George Antheil was another man who may have been romantically involved with Lamar. Antheil played an important role in Lamar's life, not just as a possible lover, but also as a collaborator on an important electronics innovation. Despite her glamorous image, Lamar was dismissive of it, saying any girl can be glamorous. All you have to do is stand still and look stupid. However, Lamar was actually quite knowledgeable about munitions engineering, thanks to her marriage to Fritz Mandel. This knowledge would come in handy in her collaboration with Anthill on the development of a frequency hopping technology that would later become the basis for modern day Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. In 1940, the beautiful actress Hedy Lamar had an idea to solve a problem in radio guided torpedoes. At that time, enemy transmitters could easily jam electronic data broadcasts on a specific frequency. Lamar proposed rapid changes in broadcast frequency to overcome this problem. A collaborator of hers, composer George Anthill, who had experience with electronic musical instruments, came up with a punch card-like device that could synchronize a transmitter and receiver. Their invention used 88 frequencies, the same as the number of keys on a piano. The pair was jointly awarded a patent for their discovery, but Anthill later credited the original idea entirely to Lamar. Despite the joint patent, the military did not use the idea of frequency hopping during World War II. However, the discovery was later rediscovered and used in ships sent to Cuba during the Missile Crisis of 1962. The idea of frequency hopping was integrated into the operation of cellular telephones and Bluetooth systems, enabling computers to communicate with peripheral devices. While Amar's invention was groundbreaking, her film career suffered after World War II. Despite this, she appeared in Jacques Tornor's 1944 film Experiment Perilous, considered one of her best films. Her most notable outing from this period was the Cecil B. DeMille-produced film Samson and Delilah, in which she played the title role alongside Vector Mature in 1949. Hedy Lamarr continued to make films in the 1950s, but her popularity had dwindled. She sold all her belongings in 1950 and moved to Mexico, but returned to the United States after getting married in 1955. She moved to Texas and then to Florida, where she appeared on television occasionally. In 1966, Lamar was arrested for shoplifting, but was acquitted. She complained to a columnist about her reduced income, having gone from making $7 million to living on a $48 a week stipend. 
1974, she objected to the use of the name Hedley Lamar in Mel Brooks' film Blazing Saddles. Lamar's reclusive later years were marked by unsuccessful plastic surgery and disputes with film festival organizers. However, her cameo in the satire Instant Karma in 1990 and renewed interest in her gender-independent personality helped revive her career. In the 1990s, her invention of radio transmission with George Antheil also received widespread recognition, and she was honored with the Electronic Frontier Foundation's Pioneer Award in 1997. Despite her accomplishments, Lamar never received any monetary compensation for her invention. She passed away on January 19, 2000 in her home in Orlando. Rest in peace, Hedy Lamar. Goodbye, legend.